Conference. It's an honour to be here in Edinburgh with you all today. My name is Karen McDade and I'm a young member from Blantyre and Vice Chair of Scottish Young Labour Conference. Scottish and all of Britain needs a Labour government. As a young person, I know that we can build a brighter future for the next generation. Young people are hopeful for the future of Scotland and the UK, but we know that we need a Labour government in Edinburgh and London to build the brighter future that we all need. This weekend, Anna Sarwar and Jackie Bailey have laid out a bold vision of a fairer and greener Scotland. Scottish Labour is on the side of change because it is on the side of the Scottish people. Scottish Labour is on your side. Labour can boot the Tories out of government at Westminster and boot the SNP out of Holyrood. Only Labour can unite our country. <laughs> Only Labour can clean up our politics and build a Britain that works for all and end nearly a decade and a half of Tory failure. Only Labour can build a Scotland that works for all and to do that we need to put Keir Starmer into number 10. Conference. It is my honour to introduce the next Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Sir Keir Starmer. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Keir Starmer. Thank you, Conference. It is absolutely fantastic to see you all here, and the energy and buzz about this conference is phenomenal. And thank you, Cara, for that brilliant introduction. And, and I have to say, for making the rest of us feel so old, Cara is only 18 years old. Isn't that fantastic, Cara? Well done. And conference, as you may have seen, I came here via Ukraine, uh, which wasn't the quickest journey, I have to say. Um, but it was an important visit, um, and a humbling visit, to have the opportunity to meet President Zelensky in Kyiv and say directly to him and the Ukrainian people that should there be a change of government next year, the support for Ukraine will remain the same but also to go into the outskirts of Kyiv and meet some of the communities that were hardest hit in the early days of the conflict, to see the damage, to see the atrocities, but to see them get up every day, go to work, mend whatever is broken, and show through their own resilience that they will not be broken by Russia. I found that resilience and that courage really, really humbling. And we stand with Ukraine today, and we stand with them forever until they defeat Russia. <laughs> and conference, in that spirit, can I thank you for the solidarity you've shown this weekend towards the victims of the terrible earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. I can only imagine, we can all only imagine 
what those families are going through. And I speak, I know, for all of us when I say our thoughts are with them. But the support that you've provided to people here in Edinburgh and communities across the United Kingdom, that is the best of our movement. So thank you so much for that. And Anas, thank you again for your leadership, your energy. You and everybody in this room have given Labour back its confidence here in Scotland. And <laughs> and conference, Anas and I have something in common, and it's not our football team. It's the fact that when we took on our leadership roles, People said the same thing to both of us. Good luck, but you're never going to do it. Well, conference, let me tell you, I know that together we can prove them wrong. Thank you, Anas. <laughs> well, what a difference a year makes. Four chancellors, three prime ministers, two ferries still missing, <laughs> and one rock star endorsement. That's right, conference. Rod Stewart is voting Labour. <laughs> we're, we're, we're finally reaching out to the, the Scots who grew up on the mean streets of North London. <laughs> but conference, seriously, it's been a long, hard road to this point. But this is a new era for Scotland and for Britain. The tide is turning on the Tories and the SNP. Now, Annas is right to thank the First Minister for her service. Uh, and I will do the same. To lead Scotland for almost a decade is a political achievement that must be acknowledged. And one thing we need to be clear about, wherever you stand on the constitutional issue, we must respect those beliefs as a sincere desire to make the future better for Scotland. The First Minister was sincere about that, and it shaped her service to this nation. And yes, it shaped her political success. A success grounded, let's be brutally honest, in persuading people who used to vote Labour to support her cause. Conference, we've got to reach out to those people now. There will be people in all of your communities looking again at the future of Scotland with fresh eyes. And we have to meet their gaze with confidence. Show them not just what the Tories and the SNP have done to this nation, but the Scotland that Labour can build. A fairer, greener, more dynamic Scotland in a fairer, greener, more dynamic Labour Britain. Conference, mark my words, we won't change any hearts or minds by sitting back and watching a battle for power within the SNP, or by assuming that any weakening of faith in their case automatically benefits us. We have to go out there and earn it, prove we can understand the real concerns of the Scottish people, that we've listened to the reasons those voters lost faith in Labour and Britain, and that we now offer the solutions that Scotland needs. It's not about top, it's not about change at the top of other political parties, it's about the changes we've made to our own, and the changes that we can now deliver for the Scottish people. And that's the value of the steps we've already taken together, and don't underestimate them. Change with a purpose to make our Labour Party fit to serve our country. That's why we had to show our support for NATO is non-negotiable. Understand the importance of sound money. Tear anti-Semitism out by its roots. Country first, party second. <laughs> That's the foundation that we've laid together. As John Smith said, the chance to serve 
is all we seek. The job now is to set out what that means for Scotland and Britain. And I feel that for too long we've been stuck in a brace position, buffeted from crisis to crisis. I mean, look around the country now. Look around Scotland. Families, pensioners, working people, people who've always kept their heads above water, going without decent food or heating. That's no way to live. And it's no way to run a country. People want decisive leadership, want a bold reforming government, want change that's a credible response to the challenges that they face. Because amidst all the chaos of the Tory and SNP rule, there is a growing impatience for change, for national renewal. Working people are tired of an economy that only works for those at the top. They want public services that can provide security and a springboard for opportunity. And they despair of broken politics, which can't provide their community with the tools to control their destiny. This is the change that Scotland needs, that Britain needs. And as in 1945, when we built a land fit for heroes out of the rubble of the Second World War, in 1964, when we harnessed the white heat of technology to pay our way in a changing world, in 1997, when we modernised a country held back by crumbling public services and outdated institutions, Labour must rise to the moment and provide it again. Conference, that's the scale of our challenge. But we have to find a new way, a different way. Chart a fresh course towards a better future. Now, we could talk all weekend about Labour's history in this nation, or about Scotland's success in the UK, its leadership on renewable energy, its vital contribution to British security, its cultural brilliance and spirit of innovation, all achieved within this union all achieved by the solidarity, hope, and idealism of working people. But conference, let's face facts. Many Scots, like Cara, don't remember a time before devolution, let alone our achievements in the last century. We can't run on our history. We can only run on the change we offer Scotland now. That goes for the union as well. I don't believe in our union just because of our history. I believe in it because of our future. Look at the great challenges we face. Cost of living crisis, climate change, standing up to Putin. They're common across our nations. And sticking up a border doesn't solve any of them. But But we must accept that for many Scots, they look at Tory Britain and conclude the way out is the way forward. And conference, that's the argument we have to take on now. And that's why today, I want to address those who've given up on Labour directly. And yes, those who've given up on Britain. I know the people of Scotland want change and hope. Not a showy, grandiose hope. I don't mean that. No, what I mean is the basic, ordinary hope that we used to take for granted. The sort of hope you can build your future around. That aspirations are made of. That was shared by working people across our four nations in good times and in bad. The hope that people in Scotland are once again looking to see if Labour can offer. Now, I go back to my childhood on this. I grew up working class in the 1970s. I know what a cost of living crisis feels like. The anxiety and, yeah, the shame of not being able to pay bills, which only months ago were affordable. Our phone was cut off like this. And by the way, that was it then. There were no mobile phones. 
once this colour fit was gone. But although we had our ups and downs, the one thing my parents never doubted was that things would get better. That there was always that deeper hope invested in us, in our future, in Britain, that felt secure, stable, dependable. It's more than a British value. It's what we tell our children. Work hard and you can achieve anything. Work hard and you'll get a fair chance in Britain. And look, my parents didn't just believe this. It comforted them. But is it still true? I don't think so. I think many Scots have stopped believing. Absolutely. That's the deeper cost of Tory Britain. A growing sense hard work isn't rewarded. That the bonds which tie us together, community to community, across our four nations, have been allowed to unravel. That our children won't be better off than us. Conference, this is what drives me. I don't want anyone in Britain to feel like this about their future. Now... That's not just words for me. It's the story of my life, the journey that I've been on. But it's also the story of our union, because the case for the union rests, has always rested, on the solidarity of working people, pushing Britain forward in search of that ordinary hope. But when families worry like this about their children's future, when hard work no longer guarantees fair reward, or even that your contribution is respected, then yes, that case becomes harder to make. Conference, that's what we're fighting for in our country. We need to meet the forces of division with renewed hope every day. And not just in Scotland. I want to be Prime Minister for the UK, not just Prime Minister of the UK. And that's why I've always said... The path to Labour victory must run through Scotland. So we need to raise our sights, create a collective sense of mission across our home nations. It's the only way to get that sense of hope, of possibility, of solidarity back. But we can't delude ourselves. Change must be credible. Now, working people have had enough of false promises to last their lifetime. But that means politics of ordinary hope will be hard. Hard because of the damage the Tories have done to Britain. Hard because of the damage the SNP have done to Scotland. Hard because of the damage they've both done deliberately to the prospects of our future together. Let me start with the Tories. Where do you begin? <laughs> the pain they've inflicted to our economy and public services, to our reputation around the world, to our NHS and public services, it's immense. They're not capable of the change that Britain needs. And as for the cynicism of what they'll do at the general election, to try and claim political credit for the sacrifices working people are making now, it beggars belief. But conference, whoever ends up in charge of the SNP, it's not as if they can give the Tories any lectures on political responsibility. Over 15 years in power, and what do they have to show for it? Honestly, it's always somebody else's fault. And the reason is simple. They're not truly invested in Scotland's success. Anything Scotland achieves within the UK is met with gritted teeth, seen as a roadblock to the one true goal. And so they do nothing. That's why standards in education are going backwards. Why the tragedy of Scottish drug deaths hasn't been gripped. Why they haven't just accepted Tory cuts to local services, but piled on the misery. If it's not about the Constitution, they're not interested 
and conference, we can never work with that. So whatever happens in the coming months, my message is the same. No deal under any circumstances. And conference, the phony offers of support can end now. The blame game can end now. What do they have to show for it? Honestly, it's always somebody else's fault. And the reason is simple. They're not truly invested in Scotland's success. Anything Scotland achieves within the UK is met with gritted teeth. My message is the same. No deal under any circumstances. conference, the phony offers of support can end now. The blame game can end now. The unspoken political bond between the SNP and the Tories, the shared investment in division, that ends now. The change Scotland needs is coming. A Labour government is coming. Conference, those Scots who lost faith in Britain, they have a point about Westminster. Britain has an economy that hoards potential and a politics which hoards power. And these two problems feed off each other. No similar country puts so much decision-making in the hands of so few people. And that leads to greater inequality across our country than anywhere else in Europe. It's no coincidence. I'm utterly convinced about this. Economic reform and political change must go hand in hand. I came into politics late in my life. I've run large organisations, institutions that had to serve our country, and I've changed them all, including the Labour Party. That's why I came into politics eight years ago. A new way to serve a new way to get things done, more opportunities to change our country for the better. But as a system, without reform, Westminster can't deliver on that. Pick any of the current problems in Britain, energy security, productivity, the NHS. Honestly, we could be here all day, but it wouldn't matter. The pattern is always the same. Distracted by short-term obsessions, held back by a cynicism which uses low trust in politics as an excuse to narrow our ambitions. We lurch from crisis to crisis, always reacting, always behind the curve. A sticking plaster, never a cure. That's why every crisis hits Britain harder than our competitors. The only country in the G7 still poorer than before the pandemic. The worst decade for growth in two centuries. Millions on waiting lists and rising. That hasn't happened elsewhere. It's sticking plaster politics. And the harm it does to the prospect of bringing Britain together, to renewing the hope... ...Scotland can move forward in Britain is vast. So we've got to take it on. Only Labour can fix this. Only Labour can unlock the pride and purpose of all our communities. Bring us together. Raise our sights. Nurture a real sense of collective mission. And drive us forward to the fairer, greener, more dynamic country I know that we can be. Britain needs a Labour government for any of this to happen. 
We all know that. And my message to the people across Scotland who want to see that kind of change is trust in us. There will be a clear choice at the next general election between more decline and division with the Tories or a credible change with Labour. Change for Britain that brings with it change for Scotland and your community. But I also want you to know, my Labour Party understands that this means we have to be in it for the long haul. That the change on the ballot in 2024 must last, must give people more power and resources to Scotland wherever and whoever is in power in Westminster. That's the change Scotland needs now. And to be honest, we don't just need more devolution in Scotland, we need it right across the United Kingdom. The argument is simple. The decisions which create wealth in our communities should be taken by people with skin in the game. A huge power shift out of Westminster can transform our economy, our politics and our democracy. It's not unreasonable to think our economy should give working people a fair chance to succeed. It's not unreasonable to expect Westminster to recognise the desire for communities to stand on their own feet. Quite the opposite. It's the change Scotland and Britain need. Change which comes from unlocking the pride and purpose of communities everywhere. Which spreads power and opportunity out of Westminster, puts people in control and ends sticking plaster politics. A new approach to politics and democracy everywhere in Britain, built on a new approach to growth and our economy. Because conference, you can't overstate the importance of economic growth. It's the oxygen for our ambitions, the lifeblood of a strong society and a dynamic economy. But again, this will be hard. Every policy we announce must be fully costed. The lesson of the last year is stark. Lose control of the economy and its businesses and working people who pick up the bill. We can't let that happen, even when it puts a break on things we might like to do in power. Sound money in our public finances must come first. But alongside it, we must be bold on reform on reconstruction, on national renewal. That's what people expect from a Labour government and we will deliver it. We will give working people growth from the grassroots, communities standing on their own feet, jobs that are well paid and secure. We'll end the Tory era of low pay with our new deal for working people. Partner with business on a modern industrial strategy that will drive innovation, raise investment, harness the power of new technology and put it to the service of working people. And look, we will also seek to reset relations with the European Union. We will look to increase trade, reduce friction, fix the Brexit deal. That... That's a key part of raising our ambitions on economic growth, as is tackling climate change head on. Now, I come to this not just as leader of the UK Labour Party, but also as a dad. As a dad, I'm spurred on by the voices of our children, the cry of indignation demanding our generation act before it's too late. It's a matter of justice, about the fairness and better society that I came into politics to create. But it's also the biggest opportunity we've had in decades to make this country work for working people. Conference, this is why we need a collective sense of mission, of national renewal across our four nations. We've got to come together, write a new chapter in our national story about how our generation built a fairer, greener, more dynamic Britain by tackling the climate emergency 
and using it to create the jobs, the industries, the opportunities of the future. That's what our Green Prosperity Plan is all about. It's about turning the UK into a green growth superpower, investing in wind, solar, nuclear, hydrogen, green steel and carbon capture, insulation for 19 million homes, and GB Energy, a new company that will take advantage of the opportunities of clean British power and turn them into good, secure, well-paid jobs. And yes, conference. Yes, conference. Because it's right for jobs, because it will help us to tackle climate change, GB Energy will be publicly owned. And let's be crystal clear about the benefits which flow to the Scottish people from this plan. Let's show how our Scottish businesses and families will get cheaper bills forever. How Scotland can get real energy independence from tyrants like Putin forever. And how we can give every community, from highlands to lowlands, islands to the central belt, a fair shot at the jobs and prosperity of the future. It won't be easy. We know that. But on planning, on fossil fuel power, on challenges to the grid, we not only see the battles ahead, we'll run towards them. Because there's nothing that reeks more of decline than the idea that Britain can no longer build things that benefit working people. It's exactly that kind of inertia our opponents in Scotland relish. I will never accept that. But let's be clear about this as well. You can't fix our economy without also fixing our NHS. You know, one of the great privileges of being born in Britain, certainly throughout all my life, is the knowledge that if you get ill, if you have a serious accident, you'll get decent health care, whatever your circumstances. Not every country has that, and the anxiety it causes is huge. But when you've got millions on waiting lists and rising, when you've got to fight tooth and nail to get a GP appointment, when you call an ambulance and it takes an age to get there, isn't that precisely where we are? Conference. Let me spell this out. Whether it's the SNP in charge or the Tories, we can't let sticking plaster politics destroy our NHS. I won't stand for that, and Labour won't stand for that. Um, make no mistake about who can deliver for the NHS now and in the future. You can look at our past. You can look at our present, but most of all, you can look at the SNP's record. And a new leader can't hide from this. It's the story of their time in power writ large. No reform, no change, excuse after excuse. The answer on the NHS is Labour. The answer to change in Scotland is Labour. And the answer to getting our hope, our pride, our future back in Scotland and in Britain is Labour. <laughs> so, conference, reach out to your communities. Reach out to people who are looking at politics with a fresh pair of eyes uncertain about what the future holds for Scotland. And let us speak to them with one voice. Let's say we know that Scotland needs change. We know our economy needs to work better for working people. That our public services need to be fixed. That climate change needs bold action. 
and that our political system needs a total overhaul with communities finally in the driving seat. None of this can be achieved through more division. But if you place your faith in Labour, this is the change we offer to you, to Scotland and Britain, the case for a new Britain, the case for change, a country where working people succeed, aspiration is rewarded, public services raise you up, communities control their own destination, climate change is defeated, politics is a force for unity and for good, a Scotland that is proud, confident, ambitious and successful, thriving in a fairer, greener, more dynamic Britain. A Britain where all our great nations rekindled the shared hope that can, as it has in the past, drive us towards a better future. That's the change we need. That's the chance we have. Thank you so much, Conference. <laughs>